Welcome back to Morgan's video blog with writing tips from the pros and of course my own writerly musings. Today I'm here with, but I don't want to be a hero, notes from the titular DISCON 3 panel. The panelists were Alan Smale, L.E. Iyer, Fonda Lee, Nancy Cress, and Patty Patricia A. Jackson as moderator. Now the description was as follows. The reluctant hero is a solid staple of fiction and comic books. Panelists discuss how to write the heroes that never wanted to be, what motivates them, and how to maintain their reluctance throughout the whole series, and how to make them relatable to readers. So first off, we talked about what is a hero? What is a reluctant hero? Well, a reluctant hero has several traits. First, it has to be someone who takes a large risk, be it emotional or physical or both, on behalf of someone else or something or a society, what have you. Secondly, when there is a choice between helping and not, they choose to step up more out of a sense of duty than out of the desire to be a hero. They're doing it because it needs to be done, not because they want the admiration and respect, et cetera, et cetera. And thirdly, they have to do it without the expectation of a reward. Now, there are heroes that expect rewards, but how heroic are they? Things to think about. The heart of the reluctant hero story is the scene in which they weigh their choices and decide to do the quote-unquote right thing. Without the struggle, the reluctance part can get lost. Now, some heroes are inspired by mythical heroes, but for most writers, that's more of cultural absorption than an intentional choice in their own writing. So, what qualities, negative or positive, do the panelists like to see in their reluctant heroes? Well, first off, that choosing the heroic action cannot be a foregone conclusion, but hints of that side of their nature have to have already been established, i.e. save the cat, in which the stoic character earlier in the book saved the cat from death, and therefore you know that they have this soft spot in them. Uh, Next, uh, the reluctance and humanity of the characters can't go away once the choice has been made. Think about Sam and Frodo in Lord of the Rings. They keep choosing to do the right thing because there's no one else to do it, but they keep moving forward. They keep on with it. They don't try to schlub it off on someone else, and they pay the cost for it. It doesn't just yay, we finished and we're all done and happily ever after. No, Frodo is permanently traumatized and goes to the West with the elves. So next up on traits for a reluctant hero is even if they achieve what they intended to do, they shouldn't achieve it the way they expected to do it. Like, yay, I saved the kingdom, but it wasn't by slaying the monster. It was by slaying the people who were farming the monster's habitat, and so the animals came back, whatever. You know, it just shouldn't be in an expected way. Um, next, what the hero wants often changes. Maybe they achieve their new goal, or maybe even if they achieve their original goal, it's not what they want or need, at least not anymore. And for a reluctant hero, our panelists enjoy heroes in which there's both a benefit for doing the heroic act to someone else, for someone else, and a consequence if they don't. If there's no consequence, it's a nice to have. So what is the difference between a reluctant hero and an anti-hero? Well, often the anti-hero doesn't make the choice for themselves, they're forced to do so. And if they do make the choice for themselves, it's for selfish benefit, the praise, the reward, what have you. So what about a hero or potential hero who doesn't step up when the call to duty goes out? Well, 
there's two options. Either the heroism can be passed on to whoever did answer the call, or that potential hero can become a uh, a villain. It depends on what the consequences of failure are and who is available to step up in their place. So the panelists suggested several things. Obviously, we mentioned Lord of the Rings as an example by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, Speed of the Dark by Elizabeth Moon was mentioned. And as examples, Xena and Joxer in the TV series Xena were shown as people who might have started off maybe not heroic, but grew into it. So closing thoughts, while most heroes are constructive, heroes can sometimes be destructive if they need to tear down what's broken before they can rebuild. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back again next week with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.